Hi guys, welcome to my channel, Accounting Exemplified. Um, welcome kayong lahat sa aking mga masugid na taga-subaybay at sa mga bagong nanonood lang. So, wag nating hayaan na maapektuhan tayo ng pandemic para malimitahan ang inyong mga kaalaman, lalong-lalo na kung kayo ay isang accounting student. So, regardless kung mag enroll man kayo this coming semester or titigil muna, walang magiging problema yan. As long as I am here, I will be providing you with online video lectures para patuloy pa rin tayo na natututo at kung ikaw ay lalo na isang aspiring accountant, aspiring CPA. So, let us begin your journey here. So, pag-usapan na natin ang mga susunod na discussion. Tara! So, in the previous episodes, last two episodes, because this is a three-part series, pinag-usapan natin papaano ba natin dinidetermine ang cost ng isang merchandise. Merchandise inventory. So, napag-usapan natin yung purchase price, then you also have your discounts in terms of trade discounts and cash discounts. And last episode, pinag-usapan natin yung mga freight cost or your transportation cost. Ngayon naman, pag-usapan natin yung returns and allowances. Okay? Now, usually kasi, para sa mga merchandisers, okay, yung mga bumibili, lalong-lalo na kung ito ay wholesale, o kahit naman, actually, kahit hindi naman pala wholesale, kahit ito ay retail, meron tayong instances, may mga pagkakataon, na yung binibili nating item ay defective or damaged, o kaya naman, hindi tugma doon sa specification na gusto natin. So, for example, uh, this is a very ano, no, OA na example. Bumili ka ng aircon, imbis na lumamig, umiinit. <laughs> so, ibabalik mo yon syempre. Hindi naman heater yung binibili mo. O kaya naman, uh, bumili ka ng iPhone. Okay? Pag open mo, yung logo, Samsung. <laughs> So, hindi hindi uh, hindi tugma sa specification. Okay. The reason why I am giving you this obvious example is because I want you to appreciate yung concept ng returns and allowances. Kasi kung hindi yan tugma sa specifications mo, kung hindi yan maayos, hindi siya working properly, nasa working condition, uh, syempre, para naman hindi ka lugi doon sa value ng binili mo, kailangan mo yung papalitan. And dito, nagkakaroon ng mga returns and allowances consideration si seller. Pero, hindi naman kasi automatically na papayagan ka na bigyan ng allowances. O kaya, ibalik yon Usually, kapag bumili ka, syempre, meron itong resibo o sinasabi ng seller. Halimbawa, appliances ito, ano? O sir, ma'am, pakikip nitong resibo na ito. Kasi magagamit nyo yan later on kung sakali may mga defects or may mga sira or may mga kailangan kayong ipakita sa amin. So, yung proof of purchase mo. And meron kasi tayo, di ba, ng mga tinatawag natin na warranties. Yun yung uh, pangsigurado na maayos o kaya naman pwedeng palitan yung item kung may mga factory defects. So, yun yung considerations. Siyempre, skeptic naman kasi yung mga seller para lang masigurado nila na totoo yung sinasabi mo. Kasi baka mamaya, isa kang manggagancho, mandoloko. So, kailangan din, merong security on their part. Pero once na validated naman nila yon at siyempre, hindi naman sila mag aatubile na palitan yan or mag-provide ng allowances. Pag sinasabi natin ng mga returns, eto yung papalitan yung unit na binili mo. Pag allowances naman, ito yung magpo-provide sila ng allowance. Um, kasi usually, pag mga corporate purchases ito, yung supplier nila is hindi cash purchases. It is purchased on credit. So, later on, may mga credit terms kasi, di ba? And pag binayaran yan, oh, babawasan, magbibigay ng allowance. Kung yung specification ay hindi na meet. Kesa ibalik yung unit, yung item, pero usable naman pala, at kaya namang tanggapin ni buyer yung konting defect yung hindi ang 
tugma doon sa specification. So, nagpo-provide na lang ng allowances. Now, uh, let's go back to the example of Techie Industries na nagbebenta ng computer, no? Galing Singapore. Remember that the customer purchased 5 units of computers, yung laptops. Now, assuming 2 days after receipt, pagkadating nung items, napansin ni customer na merong isang unit na defective. Okay? O, after a thorough investigation ni Techie Industries, nag-provide siya ng allowance of 26,000. So, eto, after much careful consideration, after much checking, hindi yun outright na tinawagan ni customer si Techie Industries, si Rapo, defective, o sige, bibigyan kita ng allowance. Okay, syempre, meron muna itong investigation. Now, assuming na valid naman yung concern ni customer, o, nag-provide siya ng allowance. Hindi na lang siya ibinalik. Okay? Remember that it was purchased on credit. 2 over 10, and over 30. Kung naalala niyo yung last time. Ano? Now, it is also worthy to take note that the invoice price for one unit is 24000 Ah, sir, paano naging 24000 Remember that the list price is 30000 per item. Eh, since di ba, lima yung binili mo ni customer, kaya ang gross price, yung list price niya is 150000 And meron kang 3 discount na 20% for 20, uh, 30000 Kaya ang invoice price mo na lang ay 120000 Yung 120 na yun, divide mo sa 5 units, you will arrive at 24000 O kaya naman, 30000 less 20 discount. 20% discount. Or, 30000 times... 80%. You will arrive at the 24,000 per unit. So, yun yung halaga. Now, because it is defective, okay, may sira. 24, uh, 26,000 yung binigay na allowance. It's as if, instead na ibalik na lang, o oh, sige, hayaan na natin. Pero bibigyan kita ng allowance kasi kakahiya naman. <laughs> so, 26,000. Now, the journal, now, nabulol na ako, sorry. Now, the journal entry will be a debit to accounts payable for 26000 and a credit to either purchase returns and allowances or inventory for 26000 pesos. Again, this will depend on the inventory system used by the company. Now, stay tuned lang kayo dahil papunta na tayo doon. Pag-usapan na natin ito sa mga susunod na episodes. So, this is your journal entry once again. O debit sa accounts payable kasi magiging kabawasan yan sa babayaran ni customer kay Techie Industries. And since nabawasan nito yung value ng inventory mo or your purchases, so 26,000. Okay. Now, that is your journal entry. And going back to our cost factors and specifically citing yung cash discount and then, this one, your returns and allowances. Ang tawag kasi natin dyan ay mga contra purchases on the part of the buyer and contra sales accounts on the part of the seller. Ano lang naman kasi yan eh? It depends on the point of view, kung kanino mo tinitignan. Kung point of view ni buyer, yung cash discount ang tawag natin dyan, purchase discounts. Kung returns and allowances, ang tawag natin dyan, purchase returns and allowances. Pero kung point of view ni seller ka, yung cash discount, it is a sales discount. Yung returns and allowances, it is a sales returns and allowances. Kasi, yung binili mo, kung ikaw si buyer, benta yan ni seller. On the other way around, kung ikaw si seller, ang binenta mo na inventory, ah, uh, in, in, binenta, tama, tama. Sorry, ah. Yung binenta mo na inventory, yun yung purchases ng kabilang party. So, it is a mirror view. Okay? Now, this one kasi, yung cost factors natin will be used, will be relevant in determining your net purchases. Magkano yung cost of purchases? Okay? Such that, you have your gross purchases, kung magkano yung original price. Then, kung meron kang freight in, add natin siya. Less purchase discounts, less 
purchase returns and allowances, you will arrive at your net purchases. Now, minsan sa ibang mga libro, ang freight in nilalagay sa dulo, sa baba. Cross purchases muna, less discounts, returns and allowances. You have your net purchases plus freight in. Pero, sa iba naman, ganito ang formula. Anyway, yung freight in kasi is part of your cost purchases. O, check ninyo yung mga reference books ninyo kung tama ba ito or hindi. And let me know through the comment section. Okay? Now, you have this net purchase computation. This one naman will later on be used in the computation of your goods available for sale and under a periodic inventory system kasi advance ko lang ng konti ginagamit kasi natin yon para masolve yung cost of goods sold pero kung perpetual kasi no? <laughs> in advance ko na yung purchases mo kasi ang entry niya ay nasa inventory anyway this is your inventory movement beginning inventory ang beginning inventory ito yung ending inventory mo ng previous period ni roll over lang siya. Ni roll forward. Plus mo yung net purchases. Ang total nitong dalawa is your goods available for sale. The cost of goods na available para ibenta. Pag binawas natin yung cost of goods sold, you will arrive at the ending balance of your inventory account. O kaya pagbalik na rin natin, eto yung cost of goods available for sale mo. Then, after your inventory count na find out mo, ganito yung value ng ending inventory mo. O yung difference ng dalawa, that is your cost of goods sold. So, this is your inventory movement. Now, oh, take note, COGS or the cost of goods sold will be included in the computation of your net profit or loss. Nandito siya. Under a merchandising business kasi, you have your net sales, less your cost of goods sold, you will arrive at the gross profit. O add or less natin yung mga other income and expense accounts. Discuss natin ito kasi pag-usapan natin yung mga operating expenses sa mga susunod na episodes. After that, you will arrive at your net profit or loss. Okay? Net profit kung positive ang kinalabasan, o net loss kung negative. Pagdating kasi sa merchandise, ah, sorry, pagdating kasi sa service business, you only have revenue from services, wala kang cost of goods sold, you will have to less your expenses, your various expenses para makuha natin yung net profit or loss. Okay? So, anyway, don't worry. Babalikan natin ito sa mga susunod na episodes para ma-emphasize natin. Magbibigay tayo ng mga illustrations. Huwag kayong mag-alala doon. Pansinin nyo naman that this net sales, meron akong um, character dito. Ano? Gusto ko kasing i-highlight sa inyo na yung net sales ang computation naman yan is parang sa purchases. Meron kang gross sales, tapos less ng sales discounts, and sales returns and allowances. You will arrive at your net sales. Now, take note, hinighlight ko, in-strike through ko pa yung freight out. Ang freight out mo kasi ay hindi involved sa computation ng net sales. Your freight out is a distribution expense or a selling expense. So, unlike yung freight in, hindi ito makaka-apekto ng net sales determination or net sales computation. Makikita mo ito under your operating expenses. Okay? So, that is, or that is, that will be our discussion for today encompassing yung purchase returns and allowances and yung relevant na mga formulas para ma-arrive natin yung net sales, net purchases, cost of goods sold, in ending inventory. So, kung meron kayong mga katanungan, please let me know. You may comment down below. Or, 
you may post it in our FB page, Accounting Exemplified. Uh, please visit because I do updates, no? periodic updates, and mga tips din, and motivations kung gusto mong maging isang accountant. So, sasamahan ko kayo sa biyahe ninyo. So, maraming salamat, and I'll see you around on my next episode. Bye-bye!